Amidst the desire to travel and take some time to reflect on life, I stumbled upon some great cities, the first being Paris. Here's a little digital scrapbook of my quick stop to Paris this summer where we pulled ourselves together to enjoy the history, culture, and art that the gorgeous city has to offer. We boarded the Eurostar from London and after three hours of sleep, we arrived in Paris around 12.30 a.m. We took a taxi straight from our hotel and were pleasantly surprised by our amazing room. It was very cozy and smelled strongly of wood and oranges and I personally loved the interior which was very art deco. I would recommend the hotel to anyone. But most importantly, it had the perfect window with the most breathtaking view. I didn't hesitate to poke my head out and take in the ocean of apartment buildings, glittering city lights, and noises of amusement that surrounded the air. I also caught a glimpse of the Big Dipper constellation right in front of our window and it was such a special coincidence because I always see the Big Dipper at home. It was around 11am when we lazily woke up to the daylight filling our rooms. Of course the first thing I did was open the windows and take in the view in daylight. I loved seeing people in their balconies doing mundane things and getting a glimpse of how people start their day. There was small graffiti art in places and I was very fond of the little rabbit. As time went by, it was time for us to grab a bite so we got dressed and were on our way. The subway and buses were our transportation of choice and I found them to be very easy to navigate. As we stepped into the city, my eyes followed people trying to notice what they wore, how they spoke fluent French. I tried to understand as best as I could but my siblings were much better than me. It was always interesting to see the different infrastructure and flora within the city. And when we arrived at this Moroccan halal brunch spot that I found, the interior was beautiful and the atmosphere was super lively. Me and my sister got a grilled cheese while my brother got a black egg burger and for dessert we had the fluffiest pistachio pancakes with mascarpone and they were definitely the highlight. We hit the streets to further explore, ending up in shops and visiting some widely recommended thrift stores. We didn't have much luck and the heat was suffocating so we decided to head back, enjoying views from the bus ride. After resting, we were blessed with the most beautiful sunset ever. I took my time admiring it as the sky turned pink and purple. I also saw a couple having dinner in their balcony, which was so precious. As for us, we headed out to explore the area that we were staying in, which was the Montmartre area, and we went to visit the Sacre-Cœur, which is supposed to have amazing views of the city. There were many stairs, but it was so worth it because the skyline was gorgeous. It was a jungle of buildings and rows and rows. The area was also very popular and so we decided to roam around and visit local shops and souvenir stores. That led us to grabbing a pizza at our local restaurant and ending the night. The next morning we woke just before noon and began our day with this cute picture of a rabbit in the subway. We arrived at the Musée de l'Orangerie and I knew exactly what I was here for, the Water Lilies collection by Monet. Upon entering the first room, I felt like I was in a dream. To be able to see the paintings up close, each brush stroke and detail, it was so breathtaking. 
I took my sweet time in these rooms, admiring each inch of each painting. I also went a little crazy in the gift shop, so stay tuned for the haul in a little bit. We continued throughout the museum, observing all the art from different French painters. I was very pleasantly surprised to see work from Henri Matisse. I love his color palette and the subjects of his paintings. I proceeded to stop by any and every floral painting because I'm obsessed with florals. I also took a liking to paintings of fruit. I think it's so interesting that the first thing we learn in art class is to draw still fruit, yet it's still so beautiful and fascinating in these famous paintings. We completed our visit, throughout which I took pictures of pieces that inspired me. From the gift shop, I got this book that talks about Monet and flowers in his paintings, and I also got a bookmark and a bunch of postcards, all from the Water Lilies collection of Monet, of course. They were so beautiful. Next, we headed to the garden. We were suddenly hit by this wave of intense heat and humidity, and it was the peak time for the sun to be out, so we found some shade in the trees and sat down to relax and people watch. I loved seeing people in their time of leisure, talking to others, reading books, and even children playing around. On our way through the garden, it almost felt like autumn because of this pathway of trees. It looked very beautiful. And there was also a carnival, something I never expected to see on my trip, but it was very cute. It was time for a snack and I really wanted to visit a cafe while in Paris, so we found something nearby. We arrived at Angelina and the line was quite short. As soon as we got in, I was in awe of how romantic and ornate the place looked. The interior was beautiful with the crown moldings and the filigree. I'm a chocoholic, so I obviously ordered the hot chocolate with some croissants. My sister got a chocolate bun and my brother got some fish sticks. I wanted to pick up something from my mom from the little gift store and then we headed out to our next destination. stand with vintage books and magazines which was fitting because we were headed to Shakespeare and Co. You weren't allowed to film inside but I left satisfied with some purchases of course. Mm. 
I picked up a copy of Shakespeare's Macbeth because it's my favorite play and there was this bookmark that was so cute and it had a cat on it and I obviously had to pick up the Shakespeare & Co tote bags. The illustrations on it are so beautiful and I love it so much. It neared sunset when we left for dinner and we were under the weather so we decided to Uber. We got lucky because we rode through central Paris seeing the Arc de Triomphe and the Louvre and many other landmarks. The sunset looked gorgeous from the ride. We arrived at KBG Korean Barbecue Grill, a halal restaurant that specializes in well Korean barbecue. It was a cozy place in a secluded alleyway. I did forget what we got, but it was good. It was our third night in Paris, and we still hadn't seen the Eiffel Tower, so we knew we had to visit. When it comes to the Eiffel Tower, I was actually surprised by how huge it was. I didn't expect it to be that big. We made it for the 11 o'clock sparkling glittering show that the tower does and it was so worth it. Thousands of tiny lights glittering in the dark is definitely a sight to see. The atmosphere was great. People were singing and dancing and having picnics and that concluded our third and last night in Paris. <laughs> the next morning we prepared for the airport but to my surprise there was a flea market right outside my hotel window i was ecstatic because that's the one thing i really wanted to do so i delayed our taxi and we enjoyed the flea market i saw these beautiful rings and they really went with my style so i decided to grab them at the flea market we then said goodbye to our hotel and we're off to the airport around 2. The drive out was actually very reminiscent of Ontario and the farmlands that we have. The airport was super small and we were the only people of color there so it was kind of funny. We boarded our flight and we're off to Milan for our next destination. Aside from the obvious quirks, Paris promises a romantic backdrop for mundane living, subtle sips of whatever you prefer in your cup, and long walks in parks. Known as the city of love and the city of light, Paris was definitely kind to us and more diverse than I ever expected. I would love to return for a longer period of time to explore more corners of the inspiring city. Until then, this is Zara signing out.